Good morning, brothers and sisters of VIC, and thank you, Pastor Omar, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. So I'm speaking in my fourth language. English is not my native language. I've got a little aid to help me through and forgive me if I make some mistakes. So today I wanted to share with you the parable of the talents, and that's one of my favorites out of the Bible. So you will find it in the gospel in two places. Once in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 till 30, and once in Luke chapter 19, uh, verses 11 till 27. So it's already important to note that it appears twice in the gospel. So it's a very important story to remind. So in both of the stories, a master puts his servants in charge of his goods or his money while he's away on a trip. And so they need actually to produce while he is gone. And then when he comes back, he actually judges the servants according to how faithful they have been with what he has given to them. And so two have been very faithful and, and also produced. And one has actually played it safe, buried it in his garden. And then once the, the master comes back, actually he's judged as being not faithful at all. And he receives actually negative compensation. So the gifts here are our personal abilities. It's the unique gifts that the, the Lord has given to you. It's what you can do best for, for others. And your personal wealth is also meant here. It's also your money that we are talking about. So Christ goes away and then one day he will be back and then he will judge us according to what we have done with that personal wealth and with the personal talents that we have been receiving and the abilities. So this story teaches us actually five important lessons. It teaches us that success is the product of work. We need to work, we need to produce return. It teaches that God always gives us everything we need to do, what he has called us to do. Actually, a talent today would be worth 16 years of labor. That's a lot of money. And it teaches us that we are not all created equal. He gives us according to each and every one of his ability or her ability. And then fourth, we should maximize the use of our talents, not for our own selfish purpose, but to honor God. And we should be seeking to succeed in order to honor him. And then fifth and last lesson, it teaches us or it shows us that we will be held accountable, that one day the Lord will be coming back and that he will, he will judge us. And so you see that the lost servant, he wasted an opportunity, an opportunity to put his talents to serve the Lord. And he was judged wicked and lazy. So perhaps some of you are now taking the time in this circuit breaker to spend time with the family. Maybe also to watch some series in Netflix and, and maybe even to pray the Lord. And I hope you do that. So, but how do you make use of your talents today, sitting in your couch? What can you do for your neighbors? What can you do to help them do their groceries? How do you help, for instance, the foreign workers today? What is it that you can do with your money? Maybe you're lucky today and you're still making money. There's other people who are less lucky and you have received also um, something from the government. And so the government has been generous here in Singapore with you. So maybe you want to reinvest that money and give it to people who cannot feed their babies. So I believe there's also a link with what comes right after in chapter 25 in Matthew verses 31 to 46. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. That's what Christ says us. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So pray today, brothers and sisters, so that the Lord shows you what you can do for others, what actions you can take, what help you can provide today, here and now. And there is a last one that I want to share with you. It's Matthew chapter 6, 3 to 4. So when you give to the needy, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. Truly, I tell you, they already have their full reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, 
and your father who sees what is done in secret with your talents, with your money, he will reward you. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Amen.